from my perspective, her comments were not the most problematic thing I've ever heard a white liberal say. They were not the most offensive thing I've ever heard a liberal say, white or black, any elitist say. But I think that Lena Dunham acts as a really good representation and vector to understand the problems and lack of accountability amongst elite liberals. And I, and I almost said white liberals, but I think that if anything, we've seen elite black liberals shill just as hard for the establishment, if not harder than we've seen some white liberals do. So we really need to you know, expand this conversation. Like we can't just absolve the joy and reads of their culpability simply because their skin has a little bit more melanin at this point. But Lena Dunham's comments, if you haven't heard them about abortion, were basically on her podcast. She had been asked to speak out about abortion and the stigma and stuff like that. And she had to admit that she didn't have an abortion. And she off colorly either made the joke or was not a joke. It doesn't really matter that she had wished she had an abortion. And of course, everyone jumped on her on her back. Everyone. Everyone thought that it was the most insensitive thing she'd ever said. It wasn't the Obel, the Odell Beckham Jr. stuff was the most insensitive thing she's ever said. But. It makes me wonder, like, but, but, so when we talk about Lena Dunham, what we're talking about here is a question of why do we elevate these people, Lena Dunham specifically, but generally this, these rando white celebrity liberals or black celebrity liberals or George Takei to this position of authority on either being a woman or being a feminist or any of these issues that they have so repeatedly Brand proved themselves to be inadequate. Yeah, they're, they're, like, like Lena Dunham is so unprepared and both from experience and education to speak on women's issues uh, that it makes you wonder how do they get to the position where their opinion makes so much it makes so like how do you get to the position where Lena Dunham is running Hillary Clinton's Twitter campaign it's, it's, it's like, like how do you get there when her experience as a woman and, and thus her feminism is so narrowly applicable due to her wealth in race that she can, you know, even geographic location that she just simply cannot understand the plight of most women in America, nor can she speak to it. And her, and all her comments on abortion and all her comments on Odell Beckham Jr. do is prove is that we, we've let these people, we've elevated these people's voices to a place to speak on these complex issues who have no business speaking on them. Like they just, like just they just don't have any business speak on them because for them, for Lena Dunham, for example, and let's use abortion as an example, her experience with abortion is so so uh, separate than most of these women who have to deal with this kind of thing. Well, what's interesting is whoever the hell asked her to speak, that's not a question that they talk about, like kind of when they're prepping about remarks and stuff like that. Because what happens is, what happened was she got asked to share her abortion story. So it was assumed that whatever event she was speaking at, she also had an abortion story to share. Okay, let's stop right there. If you have a forum where you're having women share abortion stories, maybe you should make sure those women have actually had abortions. Like, I, I mean, that's just a thought. You know what I'm saying? If you have people talking about their abortion stories and stuff, maybe you should make sure that people actually have had one to even be able to talk about it. Because, I mean, I don't understand the the, the point of her being there then. Because if she can't speak on this topic, if she can't add value to the conversation, what the hell is she there for? Just like what you're saying. And I really do see that we have this. But the problem, the other problem I have with her is, despite all the things that are wrong with it, with her commentary, with her quote unquote jokes, with just her 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 erasure of not just blackness, but particularly black women, like these people, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Planned Parenthood or whoever these 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 elite institutions and entities, they continue to put her in a position where she has this huge platform to speak on behalf of so much. And there's so many other great people out there who can do the work, who can have the conversations. If you really gotta have a celebrity, why her? She is so disliked. I guess they figure they get attention one way or the other. But see, but see, but but see this is the it's thing. It's like so problematic. And this is why I'm using her as a vector for this conversation. Because here's the thing. If you're in that bubble, she is not disliked. 
if you are in the sort of millennial, uh, I went to a liberal arts college and majored in English, and I'm a, I'm between the ages of 17 and 30, a white female or even black upper middle class female but I bubble. Know, I know, Lena, I, but I because, know, because, but, because, but both, but, but that, see, that's not even true because black women can't stand her ass. It don't matter how bougie, of, it don't matter how bougie they are. They know who she is, dude. Just just look at every time black Twitter because there's plenty of bougie black women in black Twitter. Just look at every time Black Twitter, people got their little, I'm here for the kick Lena Dunham off Twitter party. Like it happens. It happens too much. We need to, we're going to be partied out soon. There, there are a lot of racial implications for why people don't like Lena Dunham as well. And that has to do with the first season of Girls, which I've never seen Girls except for I the first episode. The and I've only watched the first episode. I've dated, I dated a lot of women uh, <laughs> of Caucasian persuasion. And so I basically know everything about what, girls. Is it like the white? It. Is it the white girlfriends? Is that what it is? I didn't. No, no. I didn't understand why people watch girls until I asked one of the women I was dating. And although she wasn't white, she was Puerto Rican, but she was, you know, she was light skinned. Wow, this is getting this is getting off color. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, no, no. Oh, and, I, and, I, and I this conversation. No, no, and I asked her why, like, why do people like this show? Because she watched it all the time. She said, well, if you went to a liberal arts college and you majored in English, this is exactly, it's not that they, the show itself is that great, but they kind of want the success that Lena Dunham has and and that kind of undeserved success. That great. Her show isn't that funny, like, it, but if you kind of. Like if you're kind of funny, you have kind of the pin that you're funny. You kind of want to be Lena Dunham at least to them. I know, and I know plenty of white women who do not like that show because they find it problematic. But the people who do kind of like not necessarily. You know, you can have shows where the writer is problematic, but you like the show. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm sorry. So on Twitter, the honeycomb said so. Ellison's line on Biddle is that he didn't know he had money when he met him, and Biddle met Ellison with the plan. This is pathetic. When the Biddle endorsement was brought up, Ellison told us at the Hall Town Hall not to repeat sneers. What? I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm, I'm kind of done with Ellison. I'm until done. You that. I'm because over. Ellison, I'm over because, everybody. Because, we need because, a coalition government. Because this point, suck. Like, it becomes hard to understand whether these people are stupid or corrupt, or like, either they're stupid, corrupt, or they just are incapable of being held accountable within the bubble they live within. This goes back to Lena Dunham, where she has made her yeah. apology. She's made her apology in the P in like a bunch of little thought pieces on random art. Uh, ep, uh, ep, I'm sorry, on random websites like the daily beast and CNN. And I'm, I'm sure Jezebel have come out with their own white woman defense of white feminism and how we shouldn't hold Lena Dunham to these high standards. And it's just like, we shouldn't should not hold to, to these high standards i totally agree but if we are going to elevate her voices if uh, her voice if we're going to elevate her voice and allow her to speak out on these issues as though she has some kind of authority to speak out on these issues then we actually do have to engage very critically what she's saying we can't mm -hmm. have it both ways we can't we can't elevate the voice of lena dunham and go oh she's so thoughtful and smart and funny and then when she makes constant mistakes and constant missteps and constant offensive statements that basically offend everyone. We come up with excuse after excuse for why it's not her fault. And like, and this comes back to our conversation about Hillary Clinton. Like, we like society is made in a way to absolve the elite of their sins and to assume innocence with them, no matter how much they fuck up. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. How, no matter how much they fuck up. Uh, I know I said it twice. That was a joke.